there's just certain things that you just can't fully understand or grasp without being in person and um, seeing it firsthand. Right. Yeah. And everyone's always, is this a scam? Exactly. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this week on the Elite Sales Podcast. I'm joined in studio by Mark Banks. Okay. Right. And then we got John Backrun, or one of our mainstays with Elite Syndicate. How's it going? And then we got Yoel Engineering behind the scenes. What so... Uh, first of all, I just wanted to uh, go into a couple of things tonight at this office here. We have a business uh, overview. I always confuse. I always, I always want to say business opportunity or business development overview. meeting, uh, BDM. <laughs> it's a meeting where we talk about the opportunity. So it's, we're going we're gonna to share more about just if someone's looking into us or they're they're open to a new career opportunity, they're looking to make some additional money on the side, send them on in. You know, obviously we have a, we have a really great video that we can send out. It's uh, join elite. Dot info. So if you guys are trying to build your team or you have someone that you want to introduce this to, you can just text in that link, you know, even to this point, even to this day, when people ask me like, Hey, tell me about your company. You know, what do you, what do you do? Like I have, I have friends that once in a while they'll, they'll see my social media. I'm like, I just shoot them back a text and I'll say, check out this video. Yeah. Like it could, it could be my mom. It could be anybody. I would, I would be like, why would I need to explain everything that's on there? So I was, I would shoot that, that, that link first. But the thing is, that that's great for people that are a little bit further away, distance-wise, ge- geographically. Mm-hmm. But for people that are local, I mean, there's nothing like actually meeting people in person and you know checking out the office and you know just seeing it's the opportunity feels a little bit more real, right. right? Like when you came aboard with us, Mark, you you wanted to come and check check out the office, right? Oh yeah, um, I came out actually a couple times just to kind of get a feel for things, and it just it's different when um when you get to see people and face to face and just kind of like read them. Cause there's just certain things that you just can't fully understand or grasp without being in person and um, seeing it firsthand. Right. Yeah. And everyone's always, is this a scam? Exactly. <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but you know, like people always worry like, you know, is this a pyramid scheme or is it, you know, are they going to ask me to, you know, write down on my friends and family on a piece of paper and call them instead of appointments. Um, None of those things happen, so no. I'm here. So no. it worked out. So for for anyone, if you guys have anybody local, or if you yourself are just getting started and don't have, uh, you know, don't, haven't got a chance to meet people in person, I mean, come on down, come on down to either one of these, or there's plenty of other uh, business overview meetings throughout the country. You know that that's at the, your local office, wherever that may be. So you can you can look that up on the corporate website. But um, yeah, if if you can get get out there, I mean, it just kind of makes it a little bit more real and. Hopefully, if it helps you get a little bit more engaged or helps people uh, really trust in the opportunity a little bit more, it's an opportunity for everybody to make more money. Yep. So it's a win-win. And then following the business overview, you know, that's gonna that's gonna run maybe twenty minutes. You know, if people have questions, we'll we'll be we'll be around to answer. We'll do a little Q and A for them, and then more importantly, just to get a chance to to let them know that we're real people. Uh, and then afterwards, following that, John tonight is actually running the uh, IUL training. Okay. Then you all, you said that will be streaming tonight. Yeah. Okay. I'll get the uh, streaming key, the uh, streaming link out to the uh, group. Me. Yeah. But if you guys have any particular, particular or specific questions, come on in so you can ask John specifically, and then we can go over all that information for you. So, so I, I, that's going to be a great training. What do you, what are you planning on going over with that? Uh, ma- mainly the basics, but what this will do for you guys, it'll give you applicable information to sell clients, have bigger premiums, um, understand the difference. So specifically um, the simplified issue products that we have. Are IUL, I, I, IUL simple? IUL E? IULs. Are they, are they, are oh, they are simple, they simple? To do? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, you just have to understand the basics of things and, and who the clients, the underwriting. But yeah, it's just like any of our, our business. Um, but a lot of people do tend to, it, it, they feel like it's over their head that they forget about it. But if you find some clients, specifically the target market of anyone, I would say early adults with some disposable income with money, they're not looking for final expense. You know, they they may have good jobs, but they don't have benefits. These things are, are additional for us that we can sell to. Got to be healthy, obviously. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, don't give away all the good stuff. So the rest of it's going to be coming tonight, this evening, mm-hmm. right now following the business overview. Um, so come, come on by, you know, we'd love to have you love to meet you guys. 
um, while I have you guys here, we don't, the holidays are actually coming. Thanksgiving next weekend. Yeah, next yeah. week. Your yeah. years flying by. So with Thanksgiving, is there any particular tips that you guys have on how agents should prepare for it, work through it? Anything else? I think it's our natural instinct to kind of withdraw during the holiday season. But um, that's really the time you want to push the hardest. Um, just because it is, it is typically a tougher time of the year. Um, cause people are a little bit tighter on their money. If you got, you know, Christmas gifts and things like that, that they want to spend money on. But honestly, this is also the same time of year that people are jolly and they're happy. They're excited. Their family's coming home. They're thinking about these things. So, um, honestly, it's the ideal time, but you do have to work a little bit harder to get in front of people. But, um, this, yeah, you just want to go a little bit harder during this time of year for sure. Go to work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. Like, yeah. if you are going to be local, okay, let's say all your family's here. When are you going to celebrate Thanksgiving? Thursday. Yep. If you have a se separate family with the spouse, you do it again on the Friday. What are you going to do on Saturday, Sunday? If you're not going to go somewhere, go to work. Don't use the, the holidays as an excuse. Oh, people won't buy. Oh, people are out. That's all in your head. That's all in your head because other people are selling and they're, they're able to sell. Now, have the decision. If you got something going on, great. Enjoy it. Take your time. Now, go to work Monday through Wednesday. It's not an excuse for you to take off the whole entire week just because your kids are off of school for that entire week. You got to feed your kids, right? <laughs> so go to work. Um, if you're going to go and do something at 2 or 3 p.m. on the weekend, you have time to go see clients. So you got to make the best out of it. You know, so as things slow down, it, if you feel like it's going to get harder, it's going to be tough. If you think it's going to be easy, super easy. It's all in your head. Be very careful about the narrative you guys create for yourselves and you tell yourselves because if you tell yourself it's going to be difficult, it's going to be difficult. Yeah. Right. If you tell yourself it's doable, it's doable. So, I mean, I, I think a lot of people will get into the notion of, oh, it's around the holidays. People don't generally don't buy. Yeah. So statistically speaking, there's absolutely nothing further from the truth. That's actually historically one of the mm -hmm. best times you know, people have the highest production during, during the holiday seasons during towards the end of the year. So also another, another thing to consider is like when, when people say like people used to have that excuse of like, Oh, when, you know, right around the holidays, it's going to be so much holiday traffic. They'll be out shopping. They'll be doing this. They'll be, Same. everyone gets Uber eats. Everyone gets like yeah. stuff delivered. Everyone has Instacart. Everyone, you know, with the pandemic, I mean, it changed a lot the way a lot of people did things. A lot of people aren't buying gifts for, for people. Oh, anymore. Yeah, of course. Yeah. They, they have Amazon for that. So, I mean, just don't tell yourself those excuses unless at least at the, at the very least, just own and say like, I don't want to work. No. <laughs> if you're, if yes. you're shut down, shut down. Okay, great. But yeah. just understand the repercussions to that. Right. You know? right. And 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 you're this is your business. You do exactly what you want to do with it. So I mean, if you want to not work, that's okay. That there's no problem with that. But when the when time comes around when you need to pay your bills, when the time comes around when you need to get gifts for your family members, when it comes time to wanting to contribute, you know, to a Thanksgiving or a Christmas dinner and you know, you're you're short on money. This is the time right now. You're going to look back at this time and be like, I made a conscious decision to not work. And I told myself a story that it won't work. So yeah. be careful of that. Yeah. If you want to look at it as an opportunity, think of it this way. Okay. So if you got people and clients you're seeing and they're celebrating their Thanksgiving, guess who's in town? They got possible family members that you could sell if you're going to work. Right. Right. But if you're shut down, all right, man, <laughs> it's on you. <laughs> Plus, even if people are busy during the holidays, with virtual and telesales, I mean, you really can't, you can't like spend like a couple minutes with you right. on the phone. Yeah. Like, we're like, come on guys, we just need to be real to ourselves. If you don't want to work, just own that part. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, which is, which is okay. Cause the thing is you'll look back and you can't blame it on anything else other than the fact that you told yourself I can't work. Yeah. Especially like the carriers that we have. I was just mentioning this before we started. Like if you have a client that wants to pay off of credit cards, they don't have, um, they don't have money in their bank account. Dude, we got carriers. They take credit cards. You can send them your ethos. They can pay with it. And you're going to get paid. They're willing. You know they're going to shop. You know they're going to buy something. Who's Who in here in this room is probably not going to look at a sale? Because you just want to be enticed about it. It's like, I kind of have, I want to see if I can get a good deal. What if you sell your life insurance as a great deal for their family? They'll, they're willing to put their money on it. So 
no excuses during the holidays unless you want there to be. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and then, and which you which you own the uh, results either way. But speaking of no excuses, do we have Nick on here? Go ahead and unmute for us, my man. What's up, Nick? Shout out to intro. you. And uh, I saw you, I saw you um, made a comment on the YouTube when you were on, and I saw the comment about your mom said, that's my son right there. <laughs> yeah. I saw that. Yeah, that's my mom. Uh, we, hold on. It might, it might be us. Me, uh, it could be us. Give us a second. Uh, we can't hear you. We got, we got a little bit of technical difficulties. Which the sound bar looks off. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, can hear you now, now we can. Sorry about that. All right, cool. All right. Yeah, no, my mom really likes cool, to though. show love. She likes to show love. I was. It made her really happy to to see that she uh she shared it to all, all her friends and family. So that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah, man. It was it was good to be a part of. It's always good to be on here. Talk to you guys. Awesome. Well, we had you on a couple of weeks ago, which it was it was great stuff. Um, also throughout throughout the uh, weeks, you know, like we just kind of you know we're we're, we're talking to each other, we're we're DMing each other a little bit, and we're just kind of going over. You know stuff about mentality and, and mindset, and you know those are all talks that I I really enjoy. It's funny because you know as we're as we're talking about how to plan things out, we came across a conversation which you you were talking about like, man, I wanted to double, but I just don't know how to do it. Right? Yeah, yeah. So go and go and uh, tell us a little bit about what happened there. So, um, well, originally, like I just felt like I hit a plateau because like with in homes, you are kind of limited on your time if you really are driving miles across the state especially if you're doing a hundred percent in home, I tend to run like maybe like 90, 10, like I'll do sometimes a call and close, but it's mainly in homes for me. So it was kind of limiting to the point where I was even at a good show ratio, still hitting a plateau. And I see people doing. Um, and I was like kind of confused. And then I didn't want to stray away from in home. So I was like, well, there's like kind of a simple answer to that what if you were to just like have somebody that's under you run those appointments and go close them that way you're still having volume and production, but you're not losing out in time. And it seemed like it was such a simple answer for me when he said it, but like, it just, I didn't think of it at all. And I've been stressed out the last couple of weeks, to be honest, feeling like I'm limiting my potential and my growth. And it was just super awesome to hear. And as soon as he said that, I actually have two appointments already set up for David Dubai to run this week. So, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, just give you guys a little more insight into the backstory. I mean, he he, Nick has been helping about twenty families a, m- a month. He wants he wants to up it to like forty or fifty families you know, to, in order for him yeah. to be able to have that impact. He, you live in the state of Rhode Island. Yes, sir. Oh, so he works in he works in the, in the, uh, the New England Northeast area, right? So to drive to drive around like like physically, he can't make it to all the appointments if he books more appointments than what he currently is doing. How many appointments? Currently, do you yeah. So on average, it's usually around 20 to 25. Um, and then on a show ratio, it's about 10 to 15 out of those will show. Then I'll close around six to seven out of those. Yep. Yeah. Yesterday, I posted my numbers just so people could kind of see it's always usually a 50% ratio. Mm-hmm. That, like for some, I don't know how it just works always out like that. So out of like the five books, I had two sales, one no, one no uh, sale, and then one reschedule. And that's just like, obviously the ROI was awesome for the amount of effort I put out for that day. And just, it was super cool just because it was the right time, right place for my first sale. So, um, but yeah, I just, um, I posted my numbers so people can kind of see like the average, like I had only five books for that day, but I, um, I have 11 set for Friday and Saturday right now. So well, six Friday, five Saturday, and then I'm probably going to run on Sunday to make up for those 20. Usually is what I do. Yeah. So how fast do you think, do you need the entire day to book up your schedule or are you able to book up a schedule? Pretty quickly, actually, depending on the power hour for 745 to like nine. So um, if I can be like attentive, focused, not stressed out calling America, because I've been honestly reaching out earlier for my service carriers just to get a hold of them at nine on the dot. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I think, um, that power hour, I usually get four or five and then I'm, I'm done by like four or 5 PM. Like yeah, I so have I my it, 10 for the day or eight to 10 for the day by like four or 5 PM. If I don't, I dial till eight usually, but yeah, I take so think the of it this way to two block out. Right. So if you have a great skill in dialing and calling, 
instead of rather than stopping, yeah, you can you can continue to dial because you're limited on your time to see clients, but you're not limited on your time to buy more leads and you're you still can finish earlier and book more appointments for other people and you could do a split sale that way. Yeah. Yeah, legit. That that's what Albert was saying. I could still add volume in without like losing out of my time. Like and I'm still running my appointments closing. Other people are closing for me as well. And like they're getting their money, obviously, and it's a free sale. So I mean, if yeah, anything, it's, like, a it's practice. It's a nice layup, you know. So I mean, I'm sure they won't be mad at that. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm actually starting the process of right now. I have only two that I've given away for Friday right now, okay. but still making sure that I'm trying to hit like now 30 a week, possibly. So I'm putting a little bit extra into another lead pack this week. Yeah. So for those of you that are a little bit newer and just just don't quite understand. The reason behind this, I mean, Nick is doing is doing a great job of booking a sufficient amount of appointments, twenty to twenty five in a week, right? So that's 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 good activity. Now the thing is, geographically, you just can't cover that much distance. If there's like a no show, and if he's driving around the state, there's you know there's there's traffic, there's weather, there's whatever, right? So logistically, you can't make it to all your appointments. If you're doing virtual or telesales, it's a little bit different. You you probably more could efficient. get a little bit more, you know. But but the thing is. He, when he, if he's trying to double it, he just felt like he was, he was hard capped because of time and logistics. I was like, why don't you just double your lead spend? Cause yeah. clearly you're not, you're not afraid of investing into your own business. So I was like, if that's not the problem. Why don't you invest more? Just double up the number of appointments. So this way you, you have a 50% no show ratio. And then for the ones you can't make, give them out to your agents, yep. you, especially since he is building a yeah. team. If you're building a team, there's no such thing as too many appointments or too much activity because you can always, give that away and then he can he can get a split on that ask them for a split i'll give provide you the appointment and the lead you go and sell it and you will do a split everybody wins everyone wins put it put it in a situation where you're so busy with so many appointments you know show your appointments <laughs> you're doing something right in those situations <laughs> yeah for sure yeah and then yeah it was, it was, it was just funny because we we're just talking about other stuff and then we kind of somehow just got to that point and he's talking about he wants to double and i'm just like Okay, well, I got I got the answer. You know, funny, funny enough, you no, know, you know where I where I thought about that idea, and, and it's not that I didn't know it before, but the previous day we were at a, a training on Apple Valley, we had a training at Paul McLean's office, so they did it. They did a sales conference, uh-huh. and then I, I, they asked me to go train, so I went out there. It was really good for me because I got a chance to hear from Trey, yeah. from Jack Yu, from Stephen D, from you know from from a few different guys, and I'm just like. I'm sitting there. I'm like, this is all stuff I already know, but sometimes, like you know, you're you're in the business for so long that sometimes you kind of lose focus of what's really important. Then they're talking about this, and you're like, it's not new stuff. Where you're like, it just the the the, the, to- the timing in which I'm receiving it feels a little bit different. I'm like, oh yeah, maybe I should get back to the basics. Yeah. And then the following day, I talked to Nick because Stephen Stephen Yee was up there, the guy that everyone confuses with for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, the, the thing is, he he's up there on stage. He's talking. He's some. He said some agent for, out in Las Vegas office went up to him and said like, Hey man, I've been really trying to help more than 20 families every single, every single month. And I, I, I I've hit my camp. I can't, I can't do it. He's like, you want me to give you the simple answer? And then, and then he's like, yeah, what do I do? And he's like, if you're spending a thousand a week on leads, spend 2000. <laughs> and then he, and he's like, huh? And then he's just like, you'll have double the activity or you're actually going to do better than, than double most likely because yeah. you're developing the experience. You're, you're getting more experience faster. Yeah. Your skill set will continue to improve at a faster rate because of that. And then, you know, the thing is that it just kind of multiplies a little bit. So you'll at least double. Yeah. Even, even if you don't use an agent or have a, a downline, when you have a higher lead spend, you get to be picky with the appointment you're going to really book. Right. Are you doing yeah. a quick set, a quick set meeting? Hey, are you going to be home? Yeah, I'll be there. Versus, Hey, Who's looking for life insurance is for you. You and your wife are going to be there. Okay, great. Do you know how much your budget is? Like you can preset that appointment right there to where you're just there to pick up a check. And if you have enough leads, if a quick sets, not even the business, you feel like it's going to no show, you have enough leads to replace that appointment. Right. So that's how you can increase your income too. Right. So, yeah, I, mean, I, I just, I just love the fact that it's, just, it's just not any new information because Nick, Nick had that moment. He's like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> He's like, he's like, damn, that was so simple. And I'm like, it is simple. And you know, the thing is, it's not like it's because I'm, I'm some type of genius. Clearly it's not that it's right. more just like, oh, we have experience. Like we know what works, what doesn't. And if we have it then we, you know, we it's, it's on us to like share with everybody else. So everyone else has an opportunity to be able to utilize that so they can continue to grow their business. 
So yeah, and I'm I'm so grateful that you actually took time aside to talk to me too. And honestly, I think that's like what will help a lot of people when they start off in this industry is really just bouncing ideas off of somebody that can like return positive feedback like that. Cause that's like all this is, you know? Yeah. Well, we were actually at a manager call earlier today and I, I was, I was talking about, it's when I talked to like newer agents yes, or agents that are really hungry to grow. And then they, you know, they're excited about their business and they have questions that they haven't, haven't experienced yet, on things that they haven't experienced yet. And when, when they get, we get a chance to talk and I actually get to share that information. It feels awesome. And it feels, it feels great. It feels great for someone that, you know, it's like putting in the work and putting in the time. It's like, this is like, it's a win-win. Like this makes it exciting. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. So appreciate you coming on and sharing, sharing that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Off, back, off to, uh, back off to more appointments this afternoon. Yeah. So I'm actually um, running service uh, work out here right now. I'm, I'm taking care of some requirements. I had to go take a picture of a green card. And then I have about another 15 minute drive. I told her I'd be there by five 30. So. I'll be like 10 minutes late, but still on time, kind of in, in our eyes. Uh, you show up, you you'll be able to take care of it. Um, I got to go. Um, honestly, just get, I think, a account number I typed in wrong. So I'm going to take the blame for this one because it <laughs> lapsed. So it happens. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. the weather like up there, Nick? It's like 40 degrees. It was like a little snow and then it melted by the time I got to my car. It's nice out, though. Yeah. If that, if I, I like that it. Nice, I we'll like the it. cold now. Honestly, I think it's really cool because once people let let you in the home a lot easier when it's cold outside. Yeah. Especially if you're like shivering. Right. And you're like, oh my god, it's freezing. You mind? They'll let you in like immediately instead of like having a fight to get in the home. Right. Oh, nice. Yeah. There's definitely the element of humanness when there's like <laughs> make your belly naked, <laughs> right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Like, you ever yeah. feel in the in the rain? Oh. Like, come in, come in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. One of those. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, I pre- appreciate you taking some time to share share that a little bit with us, Nick. You know, go out there and keep killing it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate you guys. You guys have a good night. You too. And I was that, that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's it's funny. I was you see the uh, they have the reports for the Bills and Browns game up in up in Buffalo oh, this, this weekend. Got, There's yeah. like six feet of snow. Yeah, they removed it. Yeah, they moved it to Detroit. <laughs> Instead of inches. Yeah, <laughs> right. There's like seventy two inches of it's real. That's six feet. <laughs> Because yeah. the stadium is right on the lake, so they they get pounded right there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we're here in Southern California, t-shirts and stuff, is right? <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, but yeah. I mean, I, I I wanted to share that with Nick because about Nick's whole situation because you know a lot of times like we feel like we're stuck or we feel like we've hit a point in which I don't know how to get past this this challenge right in front of me. And yeah, I mean, it's if you're newer or you don't you're lacking the experience or you're not talking to other people about it, then sometimes you stay stuck. Yeah. Right. If you guys, you guys have both been stuck in your business at some point, right? Yeah. So sometimes the thing is you're just talking to you. And so right. it's like you, you're, you're talking to your reflection. I'm stuck. Your reflection is saying, yeah, you are stuck. <laughs> <laughs> you're in your own box, man. So, so you either got to have conversations with mentors, people that's been in your position or more importantly, like open up your mind, read some books <laughs> to get you out of that feeling of stuck. No, I mean, it's like literally talking to a wall. Yeah. Because you're just like, you're, you're saying words and they're just bouncing right back at you. It's like, this sucks. This is really tough. These clients don't have money. And it's like, you're just sitting there at the wall and it's coming right back to you all day long and you're not getting anything from that. But um, I think the key thing is just really just talking to people who are more successful than you. Right. Um, and a lot of times pride and ego gets in the way of that. And you're like, no, I can figure it out or no, I can tough it out or you know what? I, I know better than this person. What do they know? Right. right. And um, I think you really have to open up your ears and your heart and your mind to the fact that someone might have something that might be more valuable. It could be someone randomly on the street, you know, mm-hmm. that could have a valuable piece of information, but you have to be open. You have to put yourself in those situations. You have to come into the office. You have to go to the trainings and um, just learn new things. Like I'm always trying to learn a new product or a new system or new something just because like, they say that the definition of insanity is just doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Don't be crazy. <laughs> just, just don't be crazy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a total waste of time. And yeah, it's vitally important for you to, if you're seeking out help to ask people that are productive, ask yes. people that are doing better than you, because if you're going out trying to create this, this uh, echo chamber for yourself or trying to find confirmation bias, because 
oh, I, I think it sucks. I just want to find someone that's going to commiserate with me. Hey, this sucks, doesn't it, John? Right. And then if he says like, yes, and I'm like, see, I knew it wasn't just me. Like, it's just your ego mm-hmm. messing with you, which it doesn't help you. Like, it's just going to keep you there longer. And you're, you're, you're creating this negative bias that you can't overcome this challenge because you're talking to people that you just want to agree with you. Yeah. So, so go, go seek it out. I mean, I, I know it gets a little uncomfortable at times because sometimes you don't want to admit to yourself. It's just, you don't want to change. Mm-hmm. And if you go talk to someone that's doing better than you, they'll be like, why don't you do this? And then you're like, well, you know, and then you want, you, you want to, you want to give all the reasons why you can't be doing that, or you don't want to be doing that. But, <laughs> like, I mean, do you want to change or not? Do you want to, do you want to make more money or not? Do you want to grow your business or not? Yeah. This is entirely your decision. So just show a little humility in those situations. Yeah, that's true. You, you start when you, you're having conversations, then you start to really hear your excuses. <laughs> instead of your own echo chamber of like, Oh yeah, no, it's, it's everything else besides me. No. Well, yeah. I mean, if you physically, if you verbally, physically, physically, verbally say, speak it out loud, you actually hear how dumb it sounds sometimes. Right. <laughs> yeah, man. Right. Cause in your own head, you, you, you right. kind of start like forming it in a different way and you don't, you don't really get the same effect. Yeah. So yeah. And Yoel and I actually been having a lot of spirited debates in the last, like we drove up to Apple Valley together and then we just debated on a ton of different things and not, and not like in a combative way. It's just, for me, I was just, we've had a lot of stuff going on in the news and, you know, midterm elections and crypto <laughs> and, and, you know, movies and all kinds of different things. And, yeah. Kyrie, Kanye, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we, we just, we just started like talking about all these different things. because you know, we had a little bit of time to kill. A and, little. <laughs> well, you know, it was, it was, it was quite a drive, but, <laughs> but, you know, during that time, like the thing is, it, look, it doesn't affect either one of our lives. Like, right. Day to day, we still got to go to work. We still got to do what we need to do. Those things are just kind of interesting things to talk about. And we don't, like, clearly we don't have all the details and nor should we, because it's not our lives, but it's always interesting to talk, talk about those things because I, like I tell you all, like we differ on some of the things, but the things I'm like, I'm just trying to understand better. Like I'm not trying to convince him. Otherwise I'm just trying to understand why he thinks what he thinks, Mm -hmm. because the thing is we have a relationship and, you know, like we, we work together. So, I mean, for us to like have a, have a more effective communication like we need to be able to like discuss things so you know that's 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 one of the things that we've been doing uh but it's funny because you know with crypto it, <laughs> there's, there's been some crazy things going man. on in crypto. i don't know how much you guys follow in crypto you oh yeah crypto. ftx oh my god yeah i saw that whole situation Did you invest in any, any oh in no, no 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 you know yeah. the new things that, that, that that's happening now with it naomi osaka the the tennis player, tennis player yeah she actually was a sponsored celebrity for it, but the way they were paying her as a sponsorship was through crypto, through FTX. So she became not only an investor, but part of equity owner now. Yeah. So now they're suing her as part of the conspiracy. And, oh and Shaquille O'Neal and Tom Brady. Shaq, Tom Brady, Steph Curry. I yeah. mean, they're all yeah. the, the golden Miami boy, Heat. The golden boy, right. Steph Miami Curry. Heat Stadium. Yeah, but it's just a publicity stunt, like, you know, to. To make it bigger than well, they're they're named defendants. They're named defendants on there. So I mean, they may get dismissed from, or they may settle. Yeah. For uh, yeah, man, it's wild. Yeah. The uh, I heard that um, I heard that the guy, the guy that owned it, is just Sam Yeah, yeah, he's just walking around the Bahamas, just no security, not not arrested. Like Bahamas is independent, or they uh, an occupancy. I think it's it's like England. It's like Monaco, man. (laughs) <laughs> it's got their own rules. They got their own rules. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they're they're living in a mansion in the Bahamas. Yeah. For I mean, for now. I mean, who know who knows? I mean, a lot a lot could turn out, but it it impacted a lot of people because you know a lot of people during during the uh, boom there was a, a ton of people that was getting into crypto and then like you know a lot of people that didn't even want to get into crypto like I I was gonna have Cliff on today but he he wasn't able to join us but mm. but you know he's. He's big into crypto. He, yeah. He's always in the office talking about it. And, you know, he's, he's my my resident expert, I guess. Yeah. Because like for me, I don't have time to do all this research. <laughs> so I, I typically say, Cliff, what's going on here? And, <laughs> and they'll tell me. But then you know, it's, it's so unpredictable. But, some, but at the time when things were going really well, a lot of people had FOMO, people that didn't even have interest in crypto to begin with, yeah. just had FOMO. And they're like, I need to get in on this. Like, I, I, I did a little bit of that. Right. And which... For me, I, I really don't care either because I'm like, I wasn't really expecting to make a ton of money on it. Like, I wasn't like, I need to make a bunch of money because I'm depending on this. Like, mm-hmm. I was just like, if it goes up, it goes up. Great. Right. So, you know, with 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 that, 
the thing we have to recognize when it comes to crypto or business in general, you know, not everyone's going to succeed at it, right? Yeah. So there's always going to be winners. There's always going to be losers. Yeah. There's always going to be people that, you know, follow it and then they're going to have some success with it. They're going to make money with it. And that, and that's, you know, part of, part of the, uh, part of the risk. But when we look at, when we equate it with the type of work that we do, I mean, it's clearly not, not as volatile as crypto. Like there's, <laughs> there's not so many external factors, but the biggest factor is that we have a lot more control over that situation. However, the reason why not everyone's going to succeed is it also depends on how much are you personally going to commit to it. Yeah. Right. Like guys, I kind of, we kind of talked about this last week, you know, for, for as much as people are losing, there's, there's it, always in those times, there's going to be someone making money. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what separates those people from the people that don't make money? I, I got an answer. Let's hear you. Go ahead. You are right. composure. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, as it was going up, they didn't get greedy. They pulled some money out, pulled money out. And then as this dips going down, there's going to be a lot of people that invest in uh, in crypto and then it will it will eventually go up. And, you know, just having a, a sound strategy, like for me, even from the start, I was like, I think I think Ethereum and Bitcoin is going to be like really the only thing that uh, is going to make it out, to be honest. That's just me. The uh, only one. But, Which one? The only real ones that, that it's going to make out is is Bitcoin and Ethereum, and not even really Ethereum. I think Bitcoin, because Ethereum, they can make more. That's not financial advice on Yul's part, by the way. Definitely, <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, but if we apply that to this business, is just having a strategy and just being composed and not being wavered by the day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week ups, ups and downs. Right. I, uh, <clears throat> I would liken it to Lord of the Rings. I happen to be a huge fan of that movie. That's the trilogy. <laughs> um it's it's like, you know, Schmeagel and Frodo, right? Why was Frodo not susceptible to the ring? Because he was pure of heart, he was diligent, he worked hard, and he made it happen. Schmeagel, on the other hand, was the complete opposite. He was a glutton, he was sloth, you name it. And that's why he was so susceptible to the ring, so susceptible to situations like that, or being taken advantage of, or, you know, um, because of his greed, because of his, you know, desires and Frodo was pure of heart, worked hard from the Shire, honest person. You have to be like Frodo to be successful. It's the same concept. And that's why Frodo was the, the person chosen for the ring or chosen by the ring. However you want to look at it. That's crazy. I've, I've never seen any of it. I've never yep. seen it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I I only, Albert, Albert was like quiet. Yeah. Just like, I, tried, oh. I tried to watch it. Bro, I tried to watch the first part of, of the, the Lord of the Rings number one where the, the, the Gandalf or something or Dumbledore? Oh, G Gandalf. Dumbledore. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he was picking up um, the, the little one. <laughs> In the hut in New Zealand, right? Oh, um, yeah. Bilbo, Bilbo Baggins. Yeah, yeah, something like that. He was picking him up in a carriage, bro. I was out in two minutes. <laughs> I'm done. It's too long. It's too yeah. long. <laughs> that is the only thing I remember. That's like but, it's like Cain and Abel too. I mean, I don't want to get the biblical on you. But it's, it's like the same story. Yeah. What's, what's the, the the analogy to Cain and Abel? Uh, the analogy to Cain and Abel is like Abel was the one that uh, made sacrifices. He worked hard. You know. He, he made he made all the sacrifices needed to get all the things that he was that he was receiving. He was successful. People liked him. And then uh, Cain was jealous of his brother and he but he wasn't making the sacrifices. And essentially, God was like, hey, you know, you're, you he's like, where's your brother? But it had it, it was uh, Cain killed his brother because he killed his idol. It's kind of it kind of goes into the mythological story of like people mm -hmm. wanting to kill their idols and, you know, people juxtapositioning themselves against people that they admire or are being making the good decisions making the good sacrifices uh so it's kind of an it kind of goes into that a little bit it's a little dramatic more dramatic than yeah kills <laughs> idol but we went, go, it goes into that we went really left field from crypto to, to the lord of the rings though <laughs> i thought i was gonna now so, <laughs> right so props <laughs> made it work <laughs> i just didn't right, know I, I didn't know really, I guess, uh, yeah i didn't know the characters <laughs> well i mean I, I, I guess like the the, the parable behind all that so you yeah to try to keep things in perspective and, and understand the bigger picture of things. So if you, if you got into crypto, just look and be like, Hey, this is my opportunity to get rich. Right. Yeah. I'm just going to, I'm just going to yes. buy a bunch of Dogecoin or whatever. And yeah, just like right. get rich off. Go of straight it. to the moon. <laughs> right. <laughs> we had the whole NFT craze when, you know, right. right. That time too. Yeah, uh, man. So things have, things have changed dramatically in, in that whole, 
that whole space. And not to say it's going to be it's done forever. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it could rebound. It could not, who knows? However, the thing is there's going to be people making money off of it because they put in some work. Either they're going to buy when it's high or, or buy when it's low and the sell when it's high and, and, or they're going to hold on to it and eventually speculatively it's going to go back up, you know? So whatever, whatever you're, you're doing in your business, the thing is you, if you come in just thinking I'm going to get rich without doing anything. Yeah. There's no chance. It's just not, you might make some money along the way, but as far as consistently and something that you can count on and something that you can continue to scale and grow. I mean, if you don't put in the time, you don't actually commit to something, you don't have the opportunity to be able to take the real uh, huge opportunity upside from there. Yeah. Cause the thing too, like the people that made money were the ones that were diligent and knew what was happening. Right? And they were also the first few that probably bailed out. It took work and it took them deciding to take a risk. Yeah. Also perspective. If you look at it from a month to month, day to day, um, you know, situation, your perception of it is going to be very different as opposed to someone who's at something over a five year or a 10 year period. Yeah. They're like, oh, this is just a normal downturn. You know, this is a bull run. This is, you know, we, we expect these things to happen, but if you're new, you know, you're not disciplined. Throw your money in it. You're throw all like, your money in it. Well, I lost it all, and and then you you pull out right away, yep. not knowing like on the other side of that is going to be a bull run. It's like, well, I mean, you just weren't disciplined, and you know you, you came up against you came up against a system that's been around for a while. Like stocks, I mean, crypto is a new concept, but stocks and investing is an old, old, old concept, and it it's not it's part of this world that we live in. It it's not going to act that much different than anything that we're, we're used to already. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think that's, that's the reason why we're so curious about some of these, these things going on around in our world, because the way I look at it is even, the, even if you're not into crypto at all, or, you know, recently we had the, the, the LA mayoral race, right. Yeah. And <laughs> we had, we had Bass going against Caruso. And then like, you know, for me, I personally, I, I was, I'm not very political, but then I was, I, I liked what Caruso said about the whole homeless thing. Cause Homeless, homeless is out of control. Homelessness is out of control here yeah, in Los Angeles. Sad, so I was I was hoping that things would change under his under his regime. <laughs> but the thing is he didn't win. <laughs> and then and then the thing is I'm like, I'm like, oh well, I guess I I could be a little bit disappointed. But then again, I'm like, but my life doesn't change. Right. Like we still got to take care of our business and we still have to handle handle all everything within our our control and our power. I mean, because the government's gonna do what they're gonna do anyway. Yeah. Right. So our job is to try to figure out how to take care of ourselves. And then to make sure that we can continue to just pay attention to things around us that might affect us or for things that don't, it's up to you if you want to spend a lot, a lot of time on it. But if it doesn't make you money, it doesn't make you money or it doesn't make you happy, I don't see the point. Yeah. Facts. So, if it don't make money, it don't make sense. Don't make sense. Yes. <laughs> and, and funny, my my twin, Stephen Yee, was, oh, was actually on stage the other day. He was, he was talking about like politics, too. We are talking about, he, he's like, I don't care who you guys vote for. He's like, I, I don't, I don't personally vote. <laughs> he's, like, he's honestly, but he's like, it's all on me. Like to, like he's like, why should I care about who's in the white house when I should be taking care of who's in my house? Correct. Right. Correct. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, not absolutely. to go political. I only voted because there was two gambling ballots. In there. <laughs> <laughs> and both of them got declined. Yeah. Sad man. Right. The sports bet. Yeah. I wanted some craps in California. Exactly. <laughs> Guess we gotta go to Vegas. <laughs> so cl clearly, our work's not in the crypto space or politics or any or any of that. But the thing is, when we just pay attention to certain things outside, I mean, for me, I look at it like they're all lessons for us. They're all right. they're all things that we can somehow relate back to. The things that are relevant to us, because you know, people are out there making a bunch of mistakes, or you know, there's people out there thriving. Mm. And the thing is, like, we can we can try to get the most out of what we can from it in a productive and constructive way, and just figure out, look, how how can I apply certain elements to my life. And continue to improve this so I can put myself in a better position so that none of that stuff actually even matters outside. Right. So, you know, let's, let's continue to focus and strive on and, and strive to do that. You know, don't get, don't get too caught up in all the distractions, you know, unless, you know, you want to have, you have that time, that free time, because you have some money behind you. Yeah. Like if, if, if you're broke, go to work. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> don't be debating. Don't be waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't want to make this like a somber ending or a somber note to that to that note but uh i heard that like the 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 president isn't even voted on it's like chosen 
like the, it's the person that the that party decides to put the most lobbying dollars towards and, and to market the most but yeah. they just want to make it at least somewhat aligned with who the people want so it doesn't completely look like it's not a democracy electoral college man plus the senator stuff yeah yeah it's just so i mean i, I mean all that to say like it, it's really not you should just definitely focus on yourself <laughs> you know what i'm saying like so i think it's intentionally made to be that complicated so yes. you don't understand it so they have some plausible deniability if they decide to do something anyway i'm not 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 a conspiracy theorist thing but i was like for us it shouldn't matter it really doesn't so let's uh let's let's make sure that we handle our house first let's make sure that we continue to, to put in that work especially with the holidays coming around you know if you guys need to up your income and up your production up your leads yeah it's pretty simple so you know hope that was helpful for you guys appreciate mark appreciate john for coming on appreciate you as always so you know let's go out there and take care of our business you know handle handle what you need to handle and we'll see you guys next week let's be elite guys